Yo, today I'm about to show you guys how to make like a basic shop and quest system. Basically, we're like you have an NPC, you walk up to it, you click a key, and then pops up like a like a quest, and then you could accept or decline. If you accept it and finish it, you get paid money. Then you can go to the shop and buy something, just like a basic system and stuff. So. Yeah, I, before we start, I just want to say thank you guys for all the love and support you guys have been showing on my videos. You got my shift to sprint video, 3,000 plus views. Uh, we had over 100 plus subscribers, and yeah, I really appreciate y'all and stuff. But yeah, let's get into it. This video is going to be a little different than my other ones and stuff because y'all know usually, like, I usually uh, script and, like, make whatever we, whatever we need for the video like usually as we go along the video I'll show you the process but because this video requires so much I've already like made it and I'm just gonna go through how I made it and like showing you guys the scripts and all the stuff you gotta change and all that and basically just explaining it I'm gonna try to keep this video as short as I can but sometimes the video might be a little more lengthy than my other videos since it's like it requires more scripting and a lot more stuff but yeah I'll just go down the list yeah I'll just probably like go down in order okay so basically, I'm using the basic stuff. I'm doing nothing, nothing to advance and stuff. We're just making a basic quest in shop system, not having no. You have to go kill this boss or anything. No, something basic. Literally, literally, the quest is you just have to clean up dirt, and then once you finish cleaning all of it, you get paid money. That simple. Okay, so let's go over to workspace, right? So we have four pieces of dirt. They're set to uh, transparency. It's set to one right now basically they're invisible so i guess the best way to start off with you guys would be to start off with the dirt so you guys can just make um let me just make this invisible so you guys can see what it looks like so yeah just you can just make one part and then you can just duplicate it just make one part make a um a cylinder then just scale it and stuff i'm pretty sure you guys know how to if you don't know how to scale it here let me just show you real quick so yeah here then just rotate it up like that then uh we'll just move it up like that scale all the way down and then boom there you go there you have then you have a circle but yeah so you want to do that and then to get like the dirty little effect obviously just make it a brownish color and then just change the material to mud but yeah so then i have four pieces of dirt you can have as many pieces as you want completely up to you but yeah so that's how you get right with the dirt then set it back to invisible now for the script all four the, the pieces of dirt all have click detectors in them and the same script so yeah so you could just script like you could just type this and then just copy and paste it literally into all the dirts but yeah so function on click script dot parent dot transparency equals one basically when the person accepts the quest the dirt will turn like transparency zero which basically means it'll be visible and stuff so every time the person clicks the dirt it'll set the dirt back to transparency one which is basically invisible and stuff so yeah Function on click script up parent dot transparency that's the parent equals one script up parent dot click detector dot mouse click connect on click once again you guys can literally once you get this and like literally just literally just model the dirt instead of click detector then just write this down in the script and then just literally duplicate it like however many times for however many pieces of dirt you want but for the video I just use four but yeah. So that's getting up. That's getting your dirt set up. Then we have our two NPCs. I'm gonna go through first the quest NPC and stuff. I I named it Job Giver. You guys can name whatever you want. Just make sure you like change the name in the script so it like knows what you're talking about. But yeah. So all you really gotta do to insert NPC because you guys might not know. You just go over here to plugins. Then you click build rig. You could choose whatever one you want, but I just go with R15 block rig. And then there you go. Now, the only things you really have to change, because you don't really have to change much here. All you really got to do is just change the name, which you can change right there. Um, then Humanoid. Uh, you want to change the display name and stuff. Well, you don't have to, but just for the sake of like how it would look in a game, you could change it. I just did click for quest. And then uh, you want to insert a prompt a, here. Let me just show you guys. A proximity prompt. And then rename it to whatever you want. I did job interaction prompt and stuff and then these are the and then I just kept all the default settings. I just changed the action text to click to receive a job. But yeah, everything else is just default and stuff. But yeah. That's all you gotta do for job giver. I'm gonna come back to store um actually no no no. I'll show you guys how to how to just do both NPCs at the same time because it's not really much to really do. So yeah just build another rig literally then just name it store or whatever. Um and then I just did click the shop. You guys can do whatever you want but yeah 
then insert another proximity prompt. It's basically the exact same thing as what you did for click for a quest. And then just change the action text to click to open to a shop. Click to open shop if that's what you want. Stuff via. Yeah. So we're finished with the workspace. The real stuff comes when we get to the GUIs and stuff. Yeah. So server script service. The only script I have here is just the leader set script. You guys have seen me write this probably like seven, eight times and stuff. It's the basic. This is setting up the leader stats of the players and setting up cache like values and stuff like that. So yeah, game dot players dot player added connect function player. Then make two variables leader stats and set new bool value. Then player leader stats dot name equals leader stats. Local cache equals instance on new int value leader stats cache on name equals cache and cache dot value is zero because we want the default value to be set to zero when a player first joins the game and stuff. But yeah, so that's our leader stats script. Like I said, if you guys have watched from previous videos, then you guys can easily just knock that out. But yeah, just literally insert a normal script, server script service, just add this, add this in. If you already know how to make a leaderboard on your own, like with scripting, then yeah, you just go ahead and do that. But yeah, then strategy wise, so. It all depends on like how you want to do it, but for this, I use four GUIs. We have job prompt GUI. I'll just show you guys what it looks like when it's enabled, right? So this, I know it doesn't look the best, right guys? But look, listen, it's all for the sake of the video. It's just basic and stuff, but yeah, no, don't get on me too much, but look. So it's basic, job prompt GUI, clean up the dirt for reward, accept or decline. And I'll just show you guys what it's like on the inside. Um, So I have the frame here and stuff. Well, to be honest, I don't really need the frame. Yeah, I don't really need the frame to be honest, but I'm gonna just leave it there because the scripting is like that. But yeah, you guys can choose to insert a frame if you want to. That's completely up to you. But yeah, I named it job prompt GUI, and then we have our accept button, decline button, and then uh, did a finish job text and job description. Actually, I don't need the didn't finish job text. I don't need that anymore. So you could just ignore that. But here, so the job description, right? That's obviously clean up the dirt for a reward. So I just added a um, text to the frame and then I just obviously like scaled it so it like fits the whole background and stuff. And then I literally just put clean up the dirt for a reward and stuff. You could just type whatever you want, but yeah. Now for the accept and decline button. So for the accept button, there are two scripts here, right? The decline button only has one. So the accept button has a clean script and an accept job script, right? So I'll go, I'll go through accept button and then decline button. So yeah, in terms of like the like colors and stuff, you guys can literally design that whatever you want. That doesn't matter. I'm just showing you guys how to like how you should have it parented and like the script for it. So for the clean script, right? So when someone clicks the button, basically when someone clicks the button, it's gonna make all of the dirt, the four pieces of dirt, it's gonna make them. Remember, they're set to invisible when a player joins the game. So it's gonna make them all visible. Then it's gonna disable this script and stuff. So then it doesn't like do it again. Like it doesn't like do it again if like a player clicks again because that would just like kind of overload the server like if someone just kept spamming over and over again and the server wouldn't know what to do basically and stuff but yeah so just four variables game that works we start whatever you named your four pieces of dirt then a function on click and then literally just changing all the dirt transparency to zero then disabling the script for however many time however much time you think would be best i just did 60 seconds because you a minute should seem good and then i connected it with script up parent dot mouse button click because obviously when they click the accept button you want this to happen now for the other script which is the accept job script um i did a variable which is local player to get the local player then function on accept i did player dot player gui dot job prompt gui dot enabled equals false basically what that means is when a player accepts the job let me show you guys. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. But yeah, so you see, you guys see how the GUI is visible right now, right? So basically, when they click accept, it basically does that. Literally, it, it literally, uh, I guess you could say, basically, it disables it. That's basically the best way to put it. It disables it and stuff because you obviously don't want that in your face when you're trying to do a job. And then it, it also disables the, um, the interaction prompt with the NPC because you wouldn't need that anymore, like, if you've accepted the job. And then it enables the finish job GUI, which I'll go into detail about that. But basically, it's like when you click finish job, it's, after, it's supposed to like give you, it's supposed to pay you after you finish doing the job. But yeah, so that's that script. So yeah, I think I'm showing enough time so you guys can be able to write it down. And make sure you pay attention to whether or not it's a local script or a normal script because some of these scripts are some scripts are local, some of these scripts are just normal server scripts. So yeah. Now for the decline button, it's low key, hella simple. I just did another variable for player to get the local player function on click. And then basically when the player clicks, it will disable the job prompt GUI. And then, yeah. 
and then it literally just disables the uh, job prompt job prompt GUI as well as the job prompt script but I'll go into detail because you guys don't really know what that is but yeah I'll show you guys when you're done and stuff but yeah and also make sure you're not doing game dot like make sure you type this as like exactly as it is unless you name things differently that's it because like don't try to do game dot starter GUI dot G like because yeah you'll just get running errors and stuff like that because that happened to me a lot like when I was first learning how to like get a player's GUI and stuff but yeah we're already like 10 minutes into the video so i'll try to speed this up but yeah so that's the job pump gui that's really the big part um so we can just um disable that so then we have our i guess we'll i'll show you the finished job gui so when a player clicks accept job here's what will pop up enabled it'll it'll say this is the uh, text button and stuff when you finish the job it'll um pay you for it and stuff and then it'll disappear and then a message will appear on your screen right the payment i call it the payment scripts and stuff so i already have it set up and stuff you have to, you guys have to set this up i know this looks like a lot and a little complicated but you guys have to set it up like this to where it's like the game like knows that the player not only uh finished the job but also it has like it needs to finish like it needs to do other stuff i should say like basically well, actually, it doesn't need this anymore. You guys can delete. You don't. You don't need this. You don't need this because I removed that. But yeah, the rest of this stuff you do need and stuff. So yeah, script up parent dot mouse button click connect function player, and then basically it's just an if statement, and then literally just game dot workspace dot dirt and all four pieces of dirt. If their transparency, if all four of their transparencies are equals to one, which is basically you've cleaned all the dirt, then it'll do this. It'll get the player's cash, and then it'll add fifteen to it. And then it'll it'll enable the job congrats GUI uh so that it says like congrats on finishing the job. And then and then the finish job button will become invisible because obviously you don't need to see it anymore since you finished the job. And then uh, after four seconds the job congrats GUI will disappear off your screen because you don't need that on your screen for too long. I think I've shown the script long enough so you guys would be able I'll just scroll over in case anyone needed more time to see the side. But yeah, that's basically it. I'll have all the scripts in the description. Oh, it's gonna be a lot to put, but yeah, I'll have all of them, so don't worry about that. Um, and then we have job congrats. Let me disable the other one. So with job congrats, basically, it's, it's just the message that appears when you finish. I know it says it looks like an O, but like it's literally an A. I literally had to double check, but no, it's literally an A. It just looks like an O because of the font. But yeah, congrats, you have completed the job and stuff. There's no there's no scripting here because the, the, the scripts that deal with this are elsewhere which is like finish job GUI and stuff but yeah so you don't have to do job congrats GUI but I just did that and stuff because the majority of games have like a congrats you finished the job or something you know then lastly we have our shop GUI and stuff I know this looks like a lot but this is just stuff just to make it look nice so this is the shop GUI I made pretty basic looks you know decent and stuff the ui corner and ui gradient basically anything that says ui you do not have to include it is literally there just to make it look good you do not have to include that all you need is the buttons and then the script but yeah <clears throat> so we have the speed boost purchase basically i did something simple and stuff when a person finishes the job and then they come pay to like buy something basically they're buying a speed boost which obviously increases their speed something pretty simple and stuff so we have two variables the player and then the player's character so we have game the players local players like the other times then character equals game that workspace find first child player name which will basically it'll get the local player's name which is you know whatever your player's name is then it'll go into the workspace and find any it'll find the first thing that matches that name which will be, of course will be the player then when a player clicks um the speed boost if if their cash value is either equal or greater to 10 and after finishing the job you have 15 cash you have more than enough then it'll change the character's walk speed it'll give them an extra 40 because everyone starts off with a default of 16 unless the game creator changes that but the point is it'll increase their speed by 40 and then afterwards it'll uh minus 10 like it'll take 10 uh, dollars away from them like 10 cash i should say away from them and stuff and then if they don't uh, i just put return which is basically like just it's basically like just saying nothing happens. That's basically the way I put it. But yeah. I know this video has been long so far. I think we're you know, like 15 minutes into it. But we're almost done guys. So I've shown you guys all the GUIs and stuff. We're done there. Lastly. Oh let me disable the shop GUI. But yeah. Then lastly we have starter player. You just need two scripts to go here. The job prompt script. 
job prompt script because you can't leave it in the um npc itself this needs to be a script that's like kind of like you could in a way you could say loaded like when the player joins hence why it's in the starter player scripts and stuff yeah function on trigger so it's basically so it's basically game the workspace job giver interaction prompt dot triggered connect which basically is like this basically let me show you guys like when they go when they go up to the npc and then they click e which is the key for the interaction prompt to open it and stuff it'll trigger this to happen and stuff it'll enable the job prompt gui and then <clears throat> it'll disable the script because obviously like there's no there's no further uh point for it and stuff but um if you remember before how i have it set in the script to where like if they decline it'll re-enable the script and stuff in case they change their mind and stuff yeah that's basically it and then we have the shop prompt script which is literally the same thing it's just um when they go to the store npc instead of the job npc and then it opens the store and then disables it it's literally the exact same thing but yeah so i've shown you guys all the scripting and stuff i'll just play test just to show you guys like how it works and stuff so you guys can just see fully out how it works so if i click play as you can see i start off with zero cash we do click for request clean up the dirt for reward we do accept then the dirt appears click it click it click it like look if i do click to finish job as you can see it doesn't do anything because it's set to only if all the dirt is transparent now if i do it now it disappears congrats you have completed the job and i've gotten 15 cash now i can go up to the shop open the shop as you, this is my normal walking speed right now then if i buy a speed boost oh i forgot to um, i forgot to include where you could close the shop but um yeah if you guys want well you guys can look at one of my previous videos to see how to like do that but if you guys don't know how to do that just ask me in the comments and i'll just explain it's really simple but yeah as you can see then i'm able to walk faster or i guess run in this case and uh it took 10 10 cash away from me which now i have 15 i mean i have five now but yeah though um that's the end of the video i apologize for it being so long and stuff it was just a lot to go through if anything was confusing or anything like that check the description for the scripts and stuff if you just want to copy it over if you have any questions or need any type of help just literally leave a comment i'll respond as soon as i can and i will help you best of my ability thank you guys for all your support you've been showing and stuff and yeah appreciate y'all for watching and yeah i'll see y'all